Top stories tonight. Nigeria Senate set to probe ex-president Buhari's 30 trillion naira ways and means advances. Senator Ningi insists 3.7 trillion naira not traced to any project in the budget. President Tinubu gives two weeks for solution to farmers' headers clashes. South Africa's Nkata Freedom Party launches election campaign. Thanks for joining us. I'm Felicity Ezewike. Let's begin. Nigeria's president of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akpabio, has charged the committee members investigating the payment of 30 trillion naira ways and means secured from the Central Bank of Nigeria by the immediate past government in the last 10 years, not to leave any stone unturned as they must go after those involved. Here's the report packaged in our studio. The Nigerian Senate has inaugurated an ad hoc committee to probe the administration of former President Muhammad Buhari over the 30 trillion naira ways and means advances from the Central Bank of Nigeria, which was approved by the Ninth National Assembly. The National Assembly is probing ways and means through which the current economic hardship came to be and ascertained why citizens have been plunged into crippling deprivation. Inaugurating the committee on Monday in Abuja, President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, noted that unraveling the mystery behind the advances remains key in understanding the country's present predicament. As it is charged with the investigation of the ways and means of about 30 trillion, including the expenses or otherwise, utilization, success or failures of the Anchor Borrowers Program. To the members of this esteemed committee, I implore you to approach your responsibilities with the utmost sense of patriotism, professionalism, and integrity. According to Akpabio, the success of the investigative panel hinges on collaboration, cooperation, and steadfast commitment for the benefits of Nigerians. He charged the committee to leave no stone unturned in pursuit of the truth about 30 trillion naira ways and means loans advances. Let us set aside personal and partisan interests, focusing solely on the task at hand. By working harmoniously with the executive and all interest groups, we can ensure that the ways and means, so-called, and utilized in the country, even the one in the past, and if it should ever occur again, are managed prudently, efficiently, and in accordance with the laws of the nation. Moreover, confidentiality is paramount to your work. Senators are here. The event which took place at the National Assembly Complex had in attendance Deputy Senate President Senator Barrao Jibrin, other senators, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edu, Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Jemi Kadoso, and Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Senator Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, among others. Responding, Chairman of the 17th Member Committee, Senator Isa Jebrin, assured the probe will be carried out with precision to a logical conclusion. Various distortions. The ways and means and the uncoverable schemes have aroused various forms of discussions amongst individuals and groups, with groups and individuals giving their opinions and interpretations. Your Excellency, the implication of this is that Nigerians are waiting for the result of this investigation. I want to assure you that we are going to carry out this assignment expeditiously, but without any form of compromise. The ad hoc committee has six weeks to investigate 30 trillion naira ways and means advances and 10 trillion naira expended on the anchor borrowers program, among other intervention programs.
Joining me on the news to discuss this further is the CEO, Asha Investment, Mokhtar Mohammed. It's good to have you on the news, Mokhtar. Why has the Nigerian Senate chosen this time to probe the administration of former uh, President Mohamedou Buhari, specifically for the 30 trillion naira ways and means advances from the CBN at this time? Well, I don't know why they have to do that, uh, but I'm not excited about it, Felicity. Um, probe, it, it doesn't get anywhere. Maybe they will prove me wrong at the end of the day. And the current Senate president, you remember the, the NDTC probe, Mr. Minister of your mic and that. So I don't think uh, anything is going to come out of it. We are not on run of another jamboree. And um, they don't need to set up a committee. All they need there was the data from the CBN and the Ministry of Finance, and we'll, we'll know where, where we are. So I'm not excited when it comes to proving Nigeria. It's sometimes it's almost like a political wind shunt. It's almost like a way of trying to cover the the, the, the government's lack, uh, lack of creativity or ideas in dealing with the economy, trying to pass the ball that, oh, we are not able to deal with inflation because uh, we have 33 long ways. And, and the finance minister is already, already towing that line already. So... I'm not excited when it comes to investigations because um, at the end of the day, I've not seen any proof in this country that I've seen the light of day and I, they have implemented most of the reports. I mean, what if they shock you? What if they shock you? Because the situation in the country is dire at the moment and they are saying the reason behind uh, this uh, search for, you know, information is to understand why we have the current crisis everybody wants to know what if they shock you what kind of response would you expect from such a committee well um felicity when you look at the committee why are we is it a committee that's solely responsible for why we are where we are today i'm um, definitely they are part of it they also the the, the, the current administration are also part of it because of some of the uh, uh, decisions they take hastily. And so do this shun have the uh, snowball effect on Nigeria. So it's not just the ways and the means. This same anchor borrowing scheme um, today was being praised by the governor of Ogun State, uh, Dakwa Biodun, saying that farmers in Ogun State have really enjoyed the privilege through the anchor borrowing scheme. So uh, I keep saying that when you see policies, not all policies that are bad, but maybe you need to reject it. And I feel for me, um, they need to shock me by coming up with anything different from what we've, we've already heard from the finance minister that said the, 10 tri the 30 trillion pumped into the economy is responsible for the high inflationary pressure and most of these um, um, funds that we're supposed to use for means and means must have gone into corrupt ways that went in search of getting more effects. So they know the people that they deal with and all this. Is. So for me, that's why I say it's a jamboree. We don't need to make drama of what we are doing, set up a committee, send a president, giving speech. Uh, I, I don't think it calls for that. If we are really sincere, what we want to do? Okay, we let's, have the let's seek a little we more education ESPC. then and ask you what specific economic and budgetary implications are associated with the 30 trillion naira ways and means advances do you have an idea well we need to look at why ways and means is a sum of borrowing that the government borrowed to meet up through the cbn but this borrowing is supposed to be um i think about um 10 percent but what we saw during the buhari administration it went way way above that and again um, what people are really concerned from investigations uh, that have been carried out by the CBN itself. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's just like more or less going through the same route again. And that them um, have this money were printed. They were they were not using the productive sector of the economy. They were actually used in a sector that did not add value to the economy. And in turn, we have so much money in circulation. And some of this money find themselves chasing the dollar. They are responsible for the high volatility we see in the exchange rate. So um, those are what they are trying to ascertain how true those are. But again, the CBP have already given us a means to say this. So it has a negative impact on the economy. It's responsible for the inflationary pressure. And at least what, what maybe about 50% responsible for the uh, um, high exchange rate volatility we are currently experiencing as a nation. You, you don't seem to have a lot of faith in this um, um probe that the Senate has instituted, but there is a background to it, and that is the hunger and economic hardship. What would be your advice to the Senate, really? What should they be focusing on if they truly want to get to the root of why we are where we are today? Yes, Felicity, I think they should be focusing on about what this money was used for, who was involved, 
and if those money were actually used for what they were meant to be used for. And how, I mean, who are the people that collected this money, if I thought this money were no use, and then hand over those people to the security agency. That's when I will be excited because I can tell you, you may have this way some means come up, then they set up another committee to look into the report of the committee and another committee. So I'm not really excited, but I'll be excited if they really um, are going to look at it thoroughly and then come up with corporates. We know they are corporates. We know people and uh, some of this money have been used for corruption, corrupt them. Um, and they've also we need to look at who did this and why they did what they did and try to recover some of this fund. And also because these funds also have are were produced without uh, economic backing and they are responsible for what and so some of those people that are more than done that should be treated as an economic shortage. And that's what I if only when they do that and I see that they are going after the corporate. And they are making public statements in terms of getting the not public statement of crucifying them, saying they actually are the ones that have destroyed the Nigerian economy. But uh, until they take those public statements to persecute them, let the court of jurisdiction give the judgment of them. I will still be very, very consigned and I'm not optimistic about it. Mokta, let's keep hope alive. I mean, they can still shock us. I'm hopeful. Thank you very much, as always, for speaking with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Still talking money. The alleged budget padding by the Senate and its supposed implementation by President Muhammad. President Bola Tinubu, I beg your pardon, administration, seem to be causing a huge division in the nation's upper legislative chamber. Senator Abdul Ningi, who represents Bochi Central, told reporters on Monday that the interview he granted in Hausa language with a foreign media prompted the argument of whether the government is implementing the 28.7 trillion narrow budget as passed or 25 trillion as reported. Ningi, however, maintains that he did not say that the president, Mohamed Bola Tinubu led administration, was operating two budgets to you today is that one at no time did i said bola hamitinubu is implementing two budgets there was no time at no time did i say bola tinubu was biased against the North. The House of Virgin is there. At no time did I say Bolatinu is implementing 25 percent, 25 trillion budget. The House of Virgin is there. But I'm here to attempt to summarize to you, members of the National Assembly Press Corps, what I said in my house interview about a week today, I was speaking on the state of the nation. And amongst other things, I lamented how the North found itself not long after Senator Ningye left the podium, his own Do South counterpart, Jimo Ibrahim, mounted and called on the federal government and the police to charge Ningye with misinformation. He insisted that the claims by the Bauchi Central Senator were worrisome, totally untrue, divisive, and amounts to criminal misinformation. My information to you today is that, one, it is not true that we have to appropriation. Two, Senator Nigi must be charged to court for conduct likely to cause breach of peace and criminal misinformation. These two are very important. The charges will be preferred by the Criminal Justice Department of the government and, of course, after thorough investigation. Because I'm a member of our Operation Committee and I'm chairman of Interparliamentary Worldwide. When I go here and travel to the next United Nations Convention, the first question I will be asked is, well, how did you do two budgets? And you know, it will be difficult for me to, to begin to answer the question. I'm preparing for the World Bank in April for the spring meeting. I'm going to be asked 
this set of questions. So it's very important as a matter of urgency for the federal government to charge an attorney to court for criminal misinformation as well as conduct likely to cause. The presidency had on Sunday described as false a claim by Senator Nengi that the federal government is operating two versions of the 2024 budget. According to a statement by Special Advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayo Onanuga, the senators claim that the National Assembly passed 25 trillion naira as the 2024 budget is false, adding that 28.7 trillion naira was passed and signed into law by President Bola Tinubu. Meanwhile, the president has given two weeks to give to find solution to the clash between farmers and headers in Nigeria. The farmers and headers clash has cost the lives of farmers and large parcels of farm produce in several states as the cattle and their headers invade the farmlands to consume crops worth millions of naira. Tinubu made this known on Monday in Mina during the inauguration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu International Airport and mechanized farm implements purchased by the Niger State Governor, Mohamed Bago. Tinubu, who said that he came to Mina to kickstart the Niger State agro-processing development growth, appealed to state governors to pay state workers their wage awards. In a bid to address the ongoing farmers' headers clashes in Nigeria, the federal government has launched a pilot cattle ranch in Yobe State. The National Agency for the Great Green Wall Initiative aims to provide a sustainable solution and reduce the frequent clashes between these two groups, the farmers and the headers. News Center's Umari Kirawa completes the report. It has been a long-standing conflict between farmers and herders that has been a major source of concern in Nigeria. The government is strategizing on a pilot cattle ranch in northeastern state of Yobi. And we felt that uh, it is right time for us to intervene uh, by um, establishing a cattle ranch for that farm uh, that will enable the, the, the herders to be positioned in one place without necessarily migrating and without necessarily encroaching into farmers' land where there will be uh, a, a crisis uh, uh, that could not uh, uh, be avoided. The pilot ranch, a joint effort between the government and local stakeholders, will serve as a model for future ranches. The initiative is said to be replicated across 11 Nigeria's northern states impacted by climate change. The, the value chain related to the livestock they are just is quite enormous that if it can be tapped very well, it will it will transform the Nigerian economy positively. We can shift away from fuel to go to uh, livestock because the potentials contained in the livestock sector is quite enormous that is uh, enough to transform the Nigerian economy positively. To ensure its success, the federal government, through the National Agency for the Great Green Wall Project, has commenced capacity building training on cattle ranching in Yobe State. The training seeks to equip herders with modern ranching techniques, herd management practices, and livestock value chain operations. Cattle rearers, the Fulanis, they are here in this training, I see you have heard them. And then the community leader, that is the person representing the Emir of Uhuru, he has talked to us in our language that we understand. If the government brings in the infrastructure and provides the ranches, and then you can bring them water and fodder, I believe they will stay in one place and then they will do their business for the benefit of all of us. What you see now is because they don't have land, they don't have where to go, and then all the land is now farmers. They are farmers, farmers, farmers. You know, and they move into this place and there will be clashes. It is hoped that through this initiative, not only will conflicts be reduced, but also economic opportunities will be created for both farmers and herders. In your best state for New Central, Umaru Kirawa. There appears to be an agreement that an increase in Nigeria's minimum wage is necessary to support low-income workers. However, the differing views have emerged on what constitutes an appropriate level. While a substantial increase could further place pressure on companies and government entities already facing high operating expenses in the current economic environment, Labour representatives argue the existing minimum wage of 30,000 naira remains insufficient to reasonably provide for the basic needs of Nigerian employees. In this report, 
New Centre's Ni Omoni captures the varying proposals from organised labour as public hearings on the minimum wage review begin. The current minimum wage is 30,000 naira per month, according to the National Minimum Wage Act of 2019. But inflation has significantly reduced real earnings. Labor unions such as the Nigerian Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress are demanding an upward revision of the minimum wage, arguing that the cost of living is increased faster than wages. After much agitation, public hearings for the Presidential National Minimum Wage Review begin across six geopolitical zones. It was initially 125 in 1981. It moved to 5,500 in the year 2000, later on 18,000 in uh, 2018 now uh, now we have 30,000 subsidies so it can be done again but it has to be spirit of compromise so proposal is not the same thing as agreement for housing we are asking for 200,000 naira per month which amounts to 2.4 million naira there are concerns about the ability of employers especially state governments to pay a higher minimum wage given that some still owe workers the current minimum wage you can actually create long-term poor for specific areas such that as the wages increase, the monies are actually going back, particularly a sector like creating mortgage. There is also a lack of consensus on what the new minimum wage should be, with different unions, Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress, proposing different amounts ranging from 447,000 naira to 850,000 naira. Northwest governors have opposed a higher minimum wage, saying their states cannot sustain it without changes to the national economy, like the revenue sharing formula. Some see this as an indication that the civil society may need to be decentralized to reflect regional differences. If we amount to self deceit, to assume that salary have equal ability to pay, to this effect, I will humbly advise that individual states who have to negotiate with their workers and agree to a realistic and sustainable minimum wage in the line with the available resources. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy of Nigeria, Wale Edu, had promised to collaborate with government at all levels towards tangible outcomes and a stronger economy that benefits all Nigerians. There has been inflation. There has been depreciation of the currency, prices have gone up, and a new national minimum wage is well deserved and it is definitely due. And um, the actual figure will be as a function of a negotiation process. Organized labor says completing the exercise is just the initial step, and sustained follow through will be crucial to achieving real impact and allaying workers' concerns. In Lagos for New Central, Ni Omani. We're on a short break. When we come back, we have more stories to stay with us. Good to know you're still with us. Nigerian Muslims, like their counterparts globally, have commenced a month long fasting period in the month of Ramadan. This year, Ramadan comes amid the rising cost of food prices and other commodities. Nigerians are hoping for a drop in the soaring prices of commodities, especially food items. President Bola Tinubu has since called for increased charity among privileged Muslims in the country. New Centre's Adeshewa Odushoga reports. From dawn to dusk, Muslims in Nigeria have joined other Muslims globally in one voice and action to abstain from food and water and refrain from uttering vulgar words and actions at the commencement of Ramadan. <laughs> the ninth month in the Islamic calendar was chosen as the month of fasting and spiritual advancement due to its association and close affinity with the revelation of the Holy Quran. The month has a native fasting period of 30 days or sometimes 29, depending on the sighting of the moon. In 2024, Ramadan begins on the 11th day of March. In Islam, religious activities are determined by nature. 
our yearly activities. One of them is fasting. You do it only once in a year, which is mandatory, for a whole month. For you to speak very, very, very good knowledge of what Allah designs the world to be and how you are going to live in it and how you are going to enjoy the, the privileges of being alive while others have died. And the third one is for you to have guidance on how to maintain your living in the world. In Nigeria, the holy month of Ramadan is coming in the middle of economic hardship, rising cost of food prices, soaring inflation, and worsening hunger among many who are below the poverty line. President Bola Tinubu has since urged wealthy individuals to assist the poor in society to alleviate their suffering, particularly during the Ramadan fast. They should try and bring down the price of uh, commodities. They can do that by flooding the market with, with their own various kind of commodities. They can import rice from uh, any China, Malaysia, and bring that big it out of the masses at a subsidized, uh, subsidized rate. So, and it will force the market down. If government can open the border for just so, for maybe three months or so, it everything we normalize again. So that is the only way, because if we continue planting something today, it will not be, uh, be, be harvested today. Some major components of Ramadan include Tahajud, which is the prayers offered individually after midnight, Tarawih, which is the prayers offered at night in the congregation, and Laylatul Qadr, particularly Blessed Night, among the odd night of the last 10 days of Ramadan, to mention a few. In Lagos for New Central, Adisha Waldu Shoga. Palestinians living in Israel are in fear of losing the right to worship at Al-Aqsa. Israel police barred hundreds of worshippers from entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in occupied East Jerusalem as the Muslim holy month of Ramadan began. Police denied entry to many Palestinian men for the first night of Ramadan prayers. At one gate, police charged at the crowd back and hit people with batons. Meanwhile, Jordan's foreign minister, Ayman Safadi, warned on Monday that restrictions imposed by Israel on Muslim worshippers' access to Al-Aqsa Mosque compound were pushing the situation towards an explosion. Earlier, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said Israel would allow access to Al-Aqsa as it had in previous years, when nearly everyone was allowed at least for the first week. At least 16 people were arrested in Tel Aviv over the weekend as police clashed with demonstrators who were demanding the departure of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu after five months of war in Gaza. The protesters called for the return of hostages and the progress in talks on a hostage deal with Hamas. About 100 hostages remain in Gaza, with 31 presumed dead. The protesters also called for an immediate ceasefire, a position that Netanyahu's government had so far rejected, arguing it would amount to a victory for Hamas. Meanwhile, mediation to push for a new ceasefire deal has resumed. However, U.S. President Joe Biden confirmed a breakthrough was looking tough. Joining me on the news to discuss this is News Central's correspondent, Bongani Sisiba. It's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Give us an insight into the situation in Israel right now. Good evening, Felicity, and also good evening to our viewers. Good to see you, too. Uh, a series of protests have been happening here in uh, Israel, especially in uh, Tel Aviv. We have witnessed about two uh, protests that has happened. The other one happened recently on Saturday. And the residents, uh, or rather Israelis, are saying they want uh, Benjamin Netanyahu out. Uh, someone I was talking to someone on the street and they were saying that if elections were to be held today, uh, they are going to vote him out. Why they are saying so, it's because uh, they say they demand uh, that uh, hostages that are held in Ga in Gaza by Hamas to be released. And they they say that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and his government are not doing enough uh, to for those um, uh, 
those that are in Gaza to be rescued. And also uh, these protests, they are also saying that the government of Israel hasn't done enough for them. So they believe that a new government will come in, especially now that there is war. And uh, the Israel is divided now. There are those that are saying uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, his government this war should end. They are calling for ceasefire. But there are also those that are saying this was the right thing to do to respond to what uh, happened on the 7th of October. So uh, now the country is divided with those that are supporting what uh, is happening, Israel bombing Gaza, and those that are saying that Benjamin Netanyahu and the, his government should leave, should go, and they need uh, fresh elections because uh, they believe that he hasn't done enough and uh, they believe that um, he hasn't done enough to rescue them, especially on the political side. Oh, you, you mentioned being um, on the streets and speaking to some citizens. Could you give us insight as to what their sentiments are about the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas and um, what their sentiments are about both Israelis and uh, Pakistan? Yes, I felicity. I had an opportunity to uh, go through the streets of West Bank and uh, also uh, Tel Aviv, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and uh, today in Tiberias, uh, speaking to the citizens on the street, like I said earlier on, that uh, Israel is divided. There are those that are supporting uh, the war that is going on in Gaza, and they are saying that um, uh, the government of uh, Israel, or rather uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, what he is doing is 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 okay because that they they he had to respond to what Hamas did. But there are also those that are saying that um they need ceasefire. And uh, looking at our uh, hours uh, close to the Gaza border yesterday, and we saw uh, helicopters that were dropping food. It means uh, like we heard that uh, no one is allowed in Gaza and no one can come out of Gaza. So there are also Israelites who, who are here, who are feel pity for the people who are in Gaza because they are not allowed to go out. They are also not allowed to go in. And also it, no Israel uh, a person is allowed to go to Gaza and also to go to West Bank. I was okay. in West Bank uh, day before yesterday, that is on over the weekend, and uh, speaking to citizens there, the life that they are living, like one one of um, the residents showed us uh, the, the, the border security that is there, that is about 80 meters, and they told us that they are not allowed to cross over to Israel, okay. and uh, that borderline was security rather was created to restrict Palestinians to come to Israel, and also Israelites are not allowed to go to the other side, and there okay. are a lot of checkpoints, like uh, from, from just 100 kilometers, you you find out that you there are more than five, six, seven uh, checkpoints right. where you have to uh, show the passports and all the cards, especially from the residents of uh, Palestine, and they are not allowed to enter Israel. Bongani, thank you very much for speaking with us, and do stay safe. South Africa's opposition in Qatar Party, Freedom Party has launched its general election campaign at the Moses Mabida Stadium in Durban in front of a mass of supporters. The party's leadership vowed to root out crime and corruption among the pressing issues facing the nation. The Business Desk has all of today's stories. Business News, in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. On business, crude oil earnings by the Nigeria's federal government increased by about 449.93 billion naira in the months of December 2023 and January 2024. An analysis of data in the latest report to Nigeria's oil production on Sunday showed 
Although the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission has yet to release oil production figures for February 2024, its latest data so far indicates that Nigeria's oil output maintained a northward movement in the months of December 2023 and January 2024. The country's oil production, excluding condensate, increased by 3.88 million barrels in December 2023 when compared to what it pumped in the preceding month of November. Data from the country economy, a global economic and statistical firm, put the average cost of Brent, the benchmark for crude oil, at $77.63 a barrel in December 2023. Away from that, a global business intelligence and market insights provider, Economist Intelligence Unit, has said that the Central Bank of Nigeria does not have the liquidity to support the Naira as of now. As such, EIU canvassed that the Apex Bank may resort to foreign borrowing to support the Naira and fulfill its foreign exchange obligations. It stated this in its latest country report to Nigeria, which was published recently. In mid-January, Nigeria took out a $3.3 billion loan from the African Export-Import Bank, secured on oil revenue in a so-called crude oil repayment facility, and this follows a $1 billion loan from the African Development Bank in November and another $1.5 billion being sought from the World Bank. Now, poor production output of two main crops in West African nations are expected to lead a global supply deficit of 375,000 tons this season. London cocoa futures have roughly doubled since the start of last year, while New York prices are up by about 90% during the same period. Ivory Coast and Ghana, which are currently bringing in their main crop beans, sometimes adjust the price buyers must pay farmers for their smaller second harvests. Two sources at Ivory Coast's Coffee and Cocoa Council However, said the price levels at which the bulk of these season beans were sold forward last year meant that a farm gate increase was not possible for the April to September meat crop. And that's all on the business news. To stay with us, more stories will follow in a bit. I am Nikon on Obanjo. Business news in association with. Sports update brought to you by Corn Oil. Corn Oil, we go the extra mile. Hello and welcome to sports. Team Nigeria has secured five medals in the weightlifting event at the ongoing 13th edition of the Africa Games in Ghana. The duo of King Kalu and Fevo Agboro won five medals, including two silver and three bronze medals. Competing in the 55 kilogram men category, King Kalu hoisted 87 kilograms in the snatch before recording 115 in the clean and jerk to make it a total of 202 kilograms. On his part, Fevo Agboro won two silver and a bronze in the 61 kilograms men category he lifted 113 kilograms in the snatch and 140 kilograms in the clean and jerk for a total of 253 kilograms to win the medals. With the feat, Nigeria has now won 10 gold, 7 silver medals and 13 bronze medals and are currently fourth on the medals table behind leaders Egypt, Algeria and South Africa respectively. To Nigerian football now and Malum Fashi Football Club of Katsina have been expelled from the Nigerian National League. This is part of their punishment for breaking sections of the codified rules and regulations guiding the NNL. Malufashi FC refused to honor two consecutive matches of Conference D in the NNL versus Sokoto United and City FC of Abuja. In addition, the club failed to honor the rescheduled 45 minutes league match of Wednesday, 14th February 2024 at the Amadou Bello Stadium Kaduna against Sokoto United. According to the NNL, the actions of Manumfashi FC are a breach of Article 14.7 and Article 14.10, which attract a fine of 1 million naira, as well as the club's expulsion from the league. The Nigerian National League has mandated the Katsina Football Association to help in the recovery of all fines imposed on Manumfashi, especially as it concerns the items forcefully taken away from referees in the match against Sokoto United in Manumfashi. 
Still on football now, and Arsenal Football Club have received a huge injury boost out of their second leg Champions League round of 16 tie at home to FC Porto. The London club's Japanese defender Takehiro Tomiyasu has returned to full first team training after a spell on the sidelines. The 25 year old defender last played for Arsenal on the 31st of December despite going to the Asian Cup and playing four games. He returned with a niggling calf injury that has kept him out of action for six weeks. Arsenal lost the first leg 1-0 in Portugal and his return will be a huge boost for the Gunners who are currently leading the title race in the English Premier League. Add to Formula 1 now, Haas team boss Ayao Komatsu hailed Olivier Be Oliver Behrman as a total package after the British teenager's hugely impressive standing debut with Ferrari, which fueled speculation that he will be in Formula 1 full-time next season. The obvious destination for the 18-year-old is Ferrari Pound Haas, who have a cooperation agreement with the Italian team and also share the Britain's services as a reserve. Behrman jumped into the Ferrari into Ferrari for the final practice and qualifying in Jeddah last Friday after Carlos Sainz had surgery for appendicitis, qualifying 11th and then finishing 7th on Saturday. At the same time, Haas, who slumped to last overall in 2023 and replaced Gunther Steiner with Japanese engineer Komatsu, scored their first point of the campaign with Nico Hockenberg finishing 10th. And that's all we have for you on sports. Sports Update, brought to you by Cornoil. Corn oil. We go the extra mile. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. It's not just one or five, but ten good years. Oluwato Biloba Daniel and Nidugbe, also known as Kiss Daniel, has been putting out back to back hit songs. Kiss Daniel is marking his decade in the music industry with the release of his latest EP titled Thanks A Lot. In a gesture of gratitude to his fans, Kiss Daniel unveiled the four track EP today. The compilation includes two previously released tracks Too Busy to Be Be and Twe Twe, as well as two fresh releases. Suna and Showa. Since his breakout hit song, Boju, Kiss Daniel has remained a constant force in the Nigerian music scene. With five studio albums and numerous chart-topping singles, he has solidified his position as one of the country's most reliable artists. Away from that, paternity controversy surrounding the child known as belonging to late singer Mobad has continued to linger. The Ikorodu Magistrate Court in Lagos is set to hear a case filed by Mobad's father, Joseph Aloba, requesting a DNA test for his grandson, Liam. The Aloba family's legal team, led by Monisha La Odumosu, confirmed the court's decision. They stated that the application seeks a determination of the paternity of the little Liam. Now, Mobad's father has also urged the police to investigate his daughter-in-law, Omaomi, regarding the circumstances surrounding the singer's Death. I don't know why this case is particularly lingering, but that's all we can take on entertainment tonight. And when I'm back, I'll bring you the updates on what's trending. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. Thank you for staying with us. Naira has continued to gain attention on social media, despite Nigeria's decision to ban Binance, a major cryptocurrency exchange platform, citing its alleged role in the devaluation of the Naira in the foreign exchange market. Downward slide of the Naira has continued. Government has claimed that the ban is for the stabilization of the Naira. The resurgence of discussions surrounding Naira's de 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 decline, I beg your pardon, comes as uncertainty grows among the populace regarding the government's accession. After two weeks since the ban was implemented, people are increasingly questioning whether Binance could be held responsible for Naira's devaluation. As the Naira's diminishing value persists, concerns are mounting and the debate is sustained about the broader economic implications and the effectiveness of the government's measures to address 
currency instability. And as usual, on the streets today, some Nigerians bear their minds. Let's listen to them. When you look at the Saudi Arabia, for the past 15 years, they've pegged dollar to a particular amount. The exchange of dollar to Riyadh is being pegged to just one particular amount for, for about 15 years now. You can make your research. It is pegged at a particular amount without no switching. So why can't the Nigerian government just peg down their particular the particular a particular price to the dollar exchange rate to Naira. So I think the government are working less. So and they need to be, they really need to do a, a very big job on that. The main reason why the Naira currency is being developed in the international market or international space is because Nigeria as a whole is not a producing economy. It's a consuming economy. So banning of Binance is just as it as just a cover up. I don't I like that that's I don't that, that that's right. Binance has not actually been a problem to this country because that's like one of the largest platforms for trading. But um, to me, I think Nigeria banned this because of selfish reasons, because the country as a whole has a lot of mess and bad eggs everywhere. And basically, if we want to work on ourselves, we should work on our taxations because a lot of companies are leaving the country. And That's all for tonight on What's Trending, where you can join the conversation online and share your thoughts across social media platforms. We are at New Central TV. I am Jadel Simon. And that's all tonight. But before we go, let's take another look at some of the major stories. Nigeria's Senate is set to probe ex-president Buhari's 30 trillion naira ways and means advances. Senator Ningi insists 3.7 trillion naira not traced to any project in the project budget. President Tinubu has given two weeks for solution to farmers' heathers' clashes. We also told you that South Africa's Nkata Freedom Party has launched its election campaign. To send your eyewitness report to the number showing now on your screen. You can follow us on social media at News Central TV. You can watch live on DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, Avo TV and on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.